Although there are a lot of similarities between matrix operations and our familiar operations on the real numbers, matrix operations are certainly a bit trickier. Some expressions of matrix operations aren't even defined, depending on the dimensions of the matrices involved. So today, we're going to go through a few practice problems of determining if these various matrix expressions are defined, and if they are defined, we'll identify what the dimensions of the the resulting matrix would be. We're not worried about what these matrices A, B, C, D, and E actually are. All we need to know for this exercise is the dimension of each matrix. So A is a 4 by 5 matrix, B is a 4 by 5 matrix, and so on. Using that information, we'll determine if these expressions are defined, and again, what the dimensions of the resulting matrix would be. This is a problem from Howard Anton's Elementary Linear Algebra Text. Great book. I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in buying it. I'll also show you exercise two from this same problem once we solve all of these, and you can try exercise two yourself. But let's begin with these. Maybe you want to pause the video and give these a shot before watching the solutions, but here we go. Beginning with problem 1A, we're considering the matrix B times the matrix A. And if we could agree just on some notation to help with this video, let's write B times A as the dimensions of B, which is 4 by 5, times the dimensions of A, which is 4 by 5. So this is kind of meaningless notation, but just for the purpose of this video, I hope you can agree that we can use this to describe what we're doing. A 4 by 5 matrix times a 4 by 5 matrix. Is this defined? No, it is not. Because in order to multiply two matrices together, the number of columns of the matrix on the left, so in this case 5, the number of columns of the matrix on the left, has to match up with the number of rows of the matrix on the right. These do not match, so this matrix product, BA, is not defined. So I'll just circle that problem and put a big X there. In problem B, we're considering the matrix A times the matrix B transpose. Link in the description to my lesson on transpose of a matrix if you need to review that. Again, let's rewrite this as just the dimensions so we can focus on that. The dimensions of A are 4 by 5. Now, what about the dimensions of B transpose? Well, B is 4 by 5. B transpose just interchanges the rows and columns. So the dimensions of the transpose matrix will just be the same as B's dimensions, but swapped. So instead of 4 by 5, B transpose will have dimensions 5 by 4. And now you can see that the number of columns in the matrix on the left does match the number of rows in the matrix on the right. So indeed, this product is defined. For the product to be defined again, these two inner numbers need to be the same, and the dimensions of the product will be these two outer numbers. So this is defined, and the dimensions of AB transpose are 4 by 4. Again, that's those two outer numbers, the number of rows in the matrix on the left and the number of columns in the matrix on the right. In letter C, we're considering matrix A times matrix C plus the matrix D. Now, in order for the matrix addition to be defined, the dimensions of AC will have to exactly match the dimensions of D. So let's first focus on AC. Matrix A has dimensions 4 by 5, and matrix C has dimensions 5 by 2. So we can see that this product is going to be defined because these inner numbers are the same, 5 and 5. The dimensions of the resulting product, AC, will be those outer numbers. So it's going to be 4 by 2. And then we're trying to add this to the matrix D. The dimensions of D are 4 by 2. Two. So indeed, the addition will be defined. Because the dimensions of AC are 4 by 2 and the dimensions of D are 4 by 2, this sum will be defined and in totality, the dimensions of the resulting matrix will just be 
4 by 2. In part D, we have the matrix E, which has dimensions 5 by 4, and then that's getting multiplied by a product of matrices, which we need to do first because it's in parentheses, A times C. Now A has dimensions 4 by 5, and C has dimensions 5 by 2. So we can see that AC is going to be defined because the number of columns of A is 5 and the number of rows of C is also 5. So this product will be defined and the dimensions of the resulting matrix will be 4 by 2. We can then see that the number of columns in matrix E, which is 4, matches the number of rows in this product, which is also 4. So that product E multiplied by AC will be defined as well. And the dimensions are just going to be these outer numbers, 5 by 2. So in this case, the final dimensions of the resulting matrix are 5 by 2. The dimensions of AC are 4 by 2, and the dimensions of E are 5 by 4. So that product is defined, the resulting dimensions, 5 by 2. In part E, we're considering the matrix A minus 3E transpose. Again, the dimensions of 3E transpose will need to exactly match the dimensions of A in order for the subtraction to be defined. Now, this scalar of 3 is not going to affect anything, so we really don't have to worry about that. The dimensions of A are 4 by 5, and the dimensions of E are 5 by 4. That means that the dimensions of E transpose, since that interchanges the rows and columns, the dimensions of E transpose are 4 by 5. In fact, the same as the dimensions of matrix A. So, sorry I wrote this as multiplication. We're subtracting these. Again, I'm not writing the 3 because the 3 just doesn't do anything. It just affects the entries of the matrices, but it doesn't impact the dimensions. Since these two matrices have exactly the same dimensions, the subtraction is defined, and the resulting dimension would just be 4 by 5. If you subtract a 4 by 5 matrix from a 4 by 5 matrix, you get a 4 by 5 matrix. If this was just A minus E instead of E transpose, that would not be defined because the dimensions of A are not the same as the dimensions of E. And again, the dimensions have to match in order to do addition or subtraction. Let's move on to the last question, question F. We're looking at matrix E times 5B plus A. Again, the scalar here, 5, won't affect things at all. In order to add 5B and A, B and A need to have the same dimensions. At a glance, we can see that they do. They're both 4 by 5. So the dimensions of 5B plus A will just be 4 by 5. Now the dimensions of E are 5 by 4, so let's write that. 5 by 4, those are the dimensions of E. The dimensions of 5B plus A, like we just said, that's going to be 4 by 5, because B and A both have dimensions 4 by 5. And now we can see that this product will be defined, because the number of columns in the matrix on the left matches the number of rows in the matrix on the right. The dimensions of the resulting matrix will be these outer numbers, 5 by 5. Hopefully you found those exercises helpful. Again, for a product of matrices to be defined, these inner numbers, if you write it like this, need to be the same. That means the number of columns of the left matrix needs to match the number of rows of the right matrix. If they don't match, the product's not defined. If they do match, the product is defined, and the dimensions of the resulting product are just given by the outer numbers the number of rows in the left matrix by the number of columns in the right matrix. The transpose of a matrix just has the opposite dimensions. So whereas E has dimensions 5 by 4, E transpose has dimensions 4 by 5. And in order to add or subtract matrices, they need to have exactly the same dimensions. Scalars don't affect dimensions at all. So there's a little recap, and we just went through this selection problem one. So now why don't
don't you try problem two yourself? Let me know what you get for these problems down in the comments. Check out my linear algebra playlist in the description for more. And if you find these videos helpful, please consider supporting Wrath of Math on Patreon. Link in the description. It's a huge help. Thanks for watching.